Hello, Desert Bearhawk fans. Okay, so we're back in the shop. Uh, I was going to do a couple of photos, but I figured I would do a video and I can show you one of the methods I use for cutting straight lines. But first, let's talk about what happened. Um, fitting the piece of skin that goes right here. So you need to shop. That's like B1 Bob. Fitting the piece of skin that goes right here. Um, this piece of skin sits on top of this piece of skin. So it shingles over this way, but you can see that, that this piece of skin sits on top of this one. Okay, so they're shingled up one way all the way down, and then when you get to the very end, it reverses the 032 pieces on top here. And um, when I drilled in this skin, the one that's here, the, the 025 skin that goes over the tank, I, I located and drilled all these holes, as you can see. Let's move in closer, you can see them. Now I gotta put this skin on. Well, if I put this skin on top of this one, can't see my holes to match drill them up. So because I did the other skin so long ago, I kind of forgot what I did and my thought process was skewed. I don't know if I didn't have my five hour energy kicked in or whatever, but I wasn't really thinking straight. My thought was, you know, put that skin, this skin here underneath this one, match drill the holes, pull it off, then set it up, Coleco these all in, mark all this, and uh, line it up, make my holes, drill it while I'm done. And I did that. It took about an hour and a half to get it all lined up the way I wanted it, match drilled all these holes. Uh, didn't match drill these because I can match drill these from the backside because I have access. And I match drilled all these holes with the 032 underneath. Pulled it off, stuck it on. The uh, holes on the backside here, they all lined up. Went to put the Coleco's in the skin on the front side and my holes are an eighth of an inch off. So the thickness of the 032 underneath and this and that and yada 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 things did not line up. So up onto the scrap bin up there it goes along with the, uh, the Mustang and there's a 339 up there and a Spitfire. No, oh, that got projects out my ear. But anyways, that is the second piece of skin that I've ruined on this whole project. Um, the first piece of skin, in case you didn't catch that news flash, is when I attempted to put this bend in the leading edge with the vacuum device the very first time. I forced it and I kinked it. So I ruined one, one piece of uh, 025 and a piece of uh, 32. So I had to cut a new piece. So that kind of reminded me that I don't know if I've ever discussed how I, how I cut my aluminum because I don't, obviously don't have a shear. So I use my router, and we've talked about the router before with the uh, flush trim bit. Well, what I do here for like this piece of skin, the first thing I did is I laid it out, laid it out and marked it with my straight edge here, uh, the size I wanted. And this piece is nine inches wide. Um, so I laid out the nine inch line, the cut line, and then I laid out a second line that was about a quarter inch away from the nine inch line. So I laid out a second line at nine and a quarter. And that's where these bad boys come in. Right here. The shears. And I cut this piece on the nine and a quarter line. So I'm basically making my rough cut with the shears. And you're probably saying, hey Dave, why don't you just cut it on the line with the shears? And I could. I'm pretty good at cutting a dang straight line with these shears. That's not a problem. The problem is, is that every time you stroke with those shears, it puts a little bit of deformation in the edge. And then even though if you cut a perfectly straight line, when you look at the skin, you're going to be able to tell it was cut. And let's see if I can find a piece of skin that'll show that. And I have a small scrap bin right here. So, all right. I don't know if you can see it because of the light and the reflection, but here you can see my quarter inch line is still there for the, uh, I can try to get this so it doesn't reflect. Quarter inch line is still there for the nine inch wide, but you can see I cut on the other line, you know, right on the edge is where I've cut. I try to get this so you can see it. It's hard to see and it's probably not even worth considering, but figure if you're going to do it, do it right. But you can see every time 
the shears snapped down and then opened up there's just a little bit of a deformation in this edge and I guess you're not gonna be able to see it maybe a little bit right there you can see the shadows but anyhow not acceptable as far as I'm concerned I don't want my skin to look like like that I want it to look like it was cut with a shear so what I've got here is I've got a piece of conference table I got from a company I worked for a couple companies back had an old conference table here thrown out and this is like a hell that's probably an inch and a half thick piece of MDF and it's got this hardwood laminate on it to make it look like it's uh, you know an expensive table when it's really this MDF shit you can see right there excuse me MDF stuff you can see right there so <clears throat> what I did is I took my flesh trim bit and I you can see right here I, I I milled this end off at a perfect 90 to the top you can see where it start otherwise it had this decorative end on it milled it off a perfect 90 and I did that all the way down this this six foot long table so I've got a perfect 90 degree edge right here and all I do is I just mark my line off line up my panel on either end at the tick mark clamp it down you can see it's still clamped and then I just run my router right down this edge and it cleans up that last quarter inch of material and now here let me peel back some of this you can see that that edge is just perfectly cut I wish I would focus in better for you see if I can see, zoom in there I guess not yeah there you go perfectly cut straight it looks like it was done with the machine because it was so and I wonder now that I've zoomed in if you can see the the jinky edge on the other one here let's see if you can see if you can see it but it's it's definitely wavy I mean you, you would see it if you were here in person so that's how I cut my panels I know that was probably a long-winded explanation for guys that are already doing it but if you did, didn't think of doing that you don't need to have a conference table go get yourself a, a one inch thick piece of MDF and make yourself this little cut a cut um, jig or fixture or whatever you want to call it you can even get really super fancy with it and put a, a rip fence on it over here, you know, to butt your material up against. A set, wow, I'm zoomed in way a lot. Let me get back up. You could put a rip fence here to butt your material against to get the hard 90 or whatever. I just like to measure and make sure everything's square and go. But that's how I do it. That's how I've cut every one of these pieces right here. That's how I'll trim the bottoms off of each one of these. I'll use this table. As a matter of fact, that's what this groove is for too, is so I can lay a piece of skin over the table and then line up the edge with the uh, straight groove on the inside and then run my router that way um, I use that for the um, for the uh, curl of the leading edge because it you know it kind of fits over the table this way and then I clamp it down to it and then the skin goes underneath so you get the idea yeah it's not it's not difficult it's not certainly not rocket science but it's just another way you can get a really nice looking straight factory type edge in the comfort of your own garage without dropping six thousand dollars for a shear all right we're gonna we're gonna vacuum this piece over we're gonna get it fit oh and in case you're wondering how I'm gonna do this it had come back to me um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take my straight edge and I'm gonna line up these two holes here like so and I'm get in there one-handed camera in like so, I'll put a, I'll put the, I'll pick up this hole here. I'll pick up the hole that I want to pick up, and I'll draw a line. And then uh, somewhere on the line, like you can see right here, I'll put a tick mark like I did right there. And then I'll measure the distance from the tick mark to the center of the hole. Then I'll put the other skin on, strap it all down, get it locked down where I want it, and then use the lines and a and a and a measurement to plot that hole. And I should get it pretty close, but it really doesn't matter how, you know, I just have to kind of hit it. Even if I'm slightly off, it doesn't matter because every one of those holes is going to get upsized from a 40 to a 30 because this is an overlap joint. So they'll all be number 30s there. And uh, I should have done that the first time. It was kind of a bonehead move on my part, but, you know, live and learn. That's what happens when you're away from your project for a period of time. You kind of forget where you're, where you, where you're going, where you've been. But we'll... Uh, We'll get this part made and we'll move on. As you can see, all the other skins are fitted. Um, 
Same on this side, I've got them peeled up right now going out, outbound towards the tip. But once that skin's fitted, then I'm gonna set up and mark all this to shear it all off. I'll pull all the skins off, cut them all the size. I gotta put my hole in my skin for my, for my lift strut that goes here and here. There'll be two holes in, in this skin. Gotta plot those and mark them. Matter of fact, did I mark them? Nope, haven't marked them yet, so yep. Got to mark those and that's another thing too is just drive yourself crazy you you pull the skin off you know there's 150 or 200 clecos holding on and then you forgot to mark that so guess what you get to do you get to put it all back on again and coleco it all down just so you can mark this stupid hole and uh that's why you'll see notes all over you'll see like no don't do that and trim nose rib i try to make notes right on the skin with a sharpie so I can avoid taking these skins on and off, you know, needlessly. All right, that's it from the shop. There's your update. It's 11 minutes on how to trim a piece of aluminum. I'm sure that you guys are thinking to yourself, it's no wonder he's not getting this done because he never shuts up and works on his project. But hey, if it helps somebody out, I'm happy to do it. And if uh, the video is too long for you, then uh, hey, skip forward to the next pictures and press on. All right, till then, we'll see you in the shop.